All right, so this video is going to be about Pika Editions. It's going to be showing you uh, the workflow that I use and what I specifically used for the viral video that I did. I'm going to load it up right here if it lets me. Um, so we're talking about this video right here, which got a lot of hype, a lot of attention. I want to maybe add a hug over here, or maybe I want to try out a little boom kick. And you could even try probably like a bit of a... Cool. So I'm going to go over a bunch of different tools and the process that I used uh, and really understand why Pika Editions and Pika in general is a company that you should be paying attention to. They're working on amazing stuff. Um, and Pika Editions is one of these features, which is just such a black box of opportunity. Um, and it's so early and there's so many things that you could do with it. And people are still every day discovering and showing new things that you could do with it. So I guess uh, let's dive in. Uh, so first thing is to get to Pika, it's Pika.art, that's the domain. And the feature is called Pika Editions because it allows you to add things into an existing video. Now, these videos can be anything. It could be a real video that you recorded in the past or somebody else recorded. And it can also be an AI generated video, right? There isn't really rules. Now, this is the CapCut project that I ended up actually uh, using and posting the video. You could see there's a combination of different things here, um, but what I think was uh, the little magic and uh, confusing to certain people how I did it is that Pika and a lot of their features, they only allow you to use a five second clip. So when you add a video, you can really only add something for five seconds and then you, it stops. It won't continue. It'll only crop out. The video you get is five seconds. So how do you make a longer video which feels like it's, it's smooth? Uh, because the other thing is every time you run Pika Editions, the results you get is a bit off. It doesn't look exactly like the original video. There is some artifacts, some ways to tell that it's not the original video. And so if you would try to just add one after the other, and I could also show you an example of that, um, it's not going to be super smooth. So here's an example of just stitching two videos together and you'll see here. So for this test, I'm going to show you what how I mean. easily you can add any object that you want using one image to an existing so did you, video. Did you see that bit of a kind of like glitch Yo, with Pika Let's see it again. Editions. Take a look. So for this test, I'm going to show you how easily you can add any object that you want using one image Boom. to an Right there. So is that the five second mark, right? Uh, but again, remember when people are looking on small devices, uh, when they're scrolling their feed, they might not notice it. And if you look closely at this video as well, you're going to see that there are some other uh, telltale signs of that. So let's kind of go back into Pika Editions a bit. So. What you do is you upload a video and then you upload an image and you describe what you want to happen. Uh, and so I, uh, let's kind of pull my examples here. So one of the things about AI and generally using these tools is you could run them a bunch of times. Put yourself in a position to just try as much as you can to get the result that you want because likely on the first try, especially with new tools, they're not going to be super accurate. So you're going to need to run them a bunch of different times. Um, here's just example of another video and how many times I ran that, but I want to go back a bit to um, the video that we're talking about in the, uh, in the beginning. So look how many times I ran that. I specifically had problems or more challenges with the watermelon kick to get it to the way that I wanted. The rest worked pretty well and gave me uh, really cool results, but the watermelon kick, kicking a watermelon was something it struggled with. So just look how many times I tried these different results. I want to try out a little boom over here, or maybe I want to try out a, try out a little boom kick. I actually think this is the one that I ended up using. Um, the other thing is, Try to use the UI to help you, especially if you're running a lot of times the, uh, the AI. So I star, right? I start so then I can later go back and reference it. So first thing is, let's talk about the original video that I recorded. So I believe here's the source video. So I'm just going to show you. And let's kind of maybe, how can I preview this? This is a creative stress test of Pika Editions. Like I want to maybe add a hug over here or maybe I want to try out a little boom kick. And you could even try probably like a bit of a fist bump and combine different elements very easily. So what's the trick here? The video, as you could see, this is a creative stress. Right here, I move 
the camera away. So I can then, boom, I get another five seconds because I could use this as a new scene to add the watermelon effect. And then again, when I move from here to here, I can then use another five seconds to add that effect as well. And it's harder to notice for the eye, right? When we're making transitions with a camera, when we're quickly moving it, for you to be able to spot that there's a difference. Uh, obviously, if my face is not on there, which is a bit easier to tell if somebody's face changed, it's harder to tell this version versus the AI generated version. And I could show you how that looks as well. So here you can even see what we're seeing here. Sorry, what we're seeing here. That's, these are the, this is the Pika. So you could see there's actually, I, I kind of stitched this back up, but here's the, after you see, okay, that, this is a great example. Here you could see how my face changes, right? This is pre-Pika, this is original, it looks pretty much the same, right? You could see. And now comes the Pika part. Boom. You see how the brightness changed? That's because, again, like I said, it's not perfect um, and it does have some uh, artifacts. But this is the, when the five seconds starts. And then when I transition the camera here, when I transition the camera here is when I, boom, I add another quick five seconds. Then I move back and another transition right here. Maybe you could see it. You can see how my eyes change a bit. My mouth changes a bit. My neck changes a bit. So it's really just about being very kind of smart with how you film. Uh, so you want to make quick camera movements to give a bit of that blur effect to kind of uh, conceal the, the transition that you're adding or whatever AI generated part that you're adding. Um, and then you just stitch it together in any program. I highly recommend CapCut. Uh, it's the fastest. They add so much features. I mean, it's, it's optimized for social. So, and you can even do um, longer form, but it's just, it's, it's so modern, it's so good, it's so fast, which is important. I don't want it to get stuck uh, and makes it easier the more you use it, obviously, to get better with the tool. All right, so let's go back a bit and see maybe the first example when I added the caveman. So another thing that I did in these videos is I use replicate to create uh, images of myself and whatever, various kind of things. Uh, because today it's so easy to copy your content that really the best way to kind of create a digital watermark is to show your face and it, it adds another element of uh, personalization. So I'll kind of pull up the caveman somewhere it should be here. And for replicate, here's the Harry Potter version. Uh, for for Replicate, what's good about it is they have an easy example of how you can create these. Um, and then you could use it and it's very cheap. Uh, I pay, I think, less than a dollar a month almost to just experiment this a lot. You could run a bunch of different versions to get the result that you want. And they have an example on um, how to fine tune these or train them. You just need to give like seven, eight photos of yourself. And then you don't have to pay for any other service. So I stopped paying, saving a bunch of money. And mostly this is a lot more convenient in my opinion. So here were the images that I generated. Took this one, right? Uh, and then I went to Ideogram and I just extended it a bit to give more extension, but I actually don't even think I used that. So, all right, so anyways. So this was generated in Replicate. You can then take any of these images and extend them more if you want uh, in Ideogram. These were the three images that I used. Uh, and Ideogram, again, I, I recommend it as well if you wanna create a really realistic images of stuff they have a style called realistic and it works way better than anything else and ideograms ui the canvas is uh really time saving it's awesome it's powerful so i highly recommend you check that out as well all right so how did i do it i went let's find the creative. original video here the creative stress so let's also look at a few examples so i uploaded the first video uh of me speaking a five second video Geek editions like i want to maybe and so when you do reprompt it allows you to reprompt this entry that you did and it will load the examples that I had in here. So here's the video and here's the image. And here's what I wrote. Caveman comes into scene and gets a hug in a natural way. You need to play around with this. I tried a bunch of different results. Caveman comes into the scene for a brief hug and leaves the frame. Add this to my video. But so I tried a bunch of different results to get what I wanted and finally went with something that I felt like would look the best uh, for the video. When you do retry, in Pika editions, it goes under the same kind of, what you could see here, it goes under the same uh, uh, run of it and it adds it under. 
this makes sure that you're keeping everything the same and you're just like trying it a few times. Like you're rolling the slot multiple times. Reprompt allows, it will create another instance of this and then you could have different versions and you could use that. That's also important because again, with AI you could rapidly iterate and you can kind of, you don't need to run linearly. You could run three, four at a time and then get closer to what you want. And that's way more powerful to get accurately to the vision or the idea that you have uh, in less time, which is important today because you don't want to come out with an idea uh, a year after it's out. It's, it's better to react and be reactionary to what's going on right now, to a story, to an idea that you have. So let's just run this again. Caveman comes into the scene and gets hugged in a natural way. You tap on here and then it will add it up to here and it'll start running. Now look how quickly this works. Should really be 10, 20 seconds to generate that five second clip when there's not too much load um, on their uh, on the servers. You can see it's already starting to work. And what's also really cool is just, I mean, it works so well, so realistically. It's important that you act out as well because the way this works is it tries to naturally, based on the prompt, add whatever image that you're adding, whatever object or item, in a way like it was there before. And another thing that I found is that try to match the lighting, uh, the image, the object with the video. So if this was maybe in a super light place unrelated to the scene that I was in, I found that it doesn't work as well. So let's in a moment see kind of the result that's going to be generated here. So it said replicate, ideogram, and Pika obviously. This is, we're talking about Pika editions. And CapCut for editing. This is right now like a very powerful stack uh, to work with. And of course, runway, which you can then add a lot of different stuff to it as well. So let's see the result that was that's going to get generated for us. This is a creative stress test of Pika Editions. Like I want to maybe add a hug over here. Or this is a creative stress test of Pika Editions. Like I want to maybe add a hug over here. Or maybe this is a creative. So look, stress test. This is a creative that's great. I could have used that, but the reason I didn't work was the challenging part is I wanted the caveman to enter the scene and leave it because then if if it's after five seconds like I want to maybe add a hug. now I, I would move the camera then I, I wouldn't have this person on screen so that's why the result that I got here uh, is, is so important why it's important to play out because that's a bit of the trickery right you see how that's the peak edition comes like in I maybe add a hug over here or maybe I want to and now he leaves and that's good because now I can move the camera away and there isn't like a caveman standing right there and suddenly disappearing. Um, then for the watermelon part. Maybe I want to try out a... I added a watermelon. Like I said, for this part, I had lots of struggles. Like it wasn't so easy to do, both because the way I recorded it wasn't so good and that maybe kicking a watermelon isn't a supernatural thing. Like my foot might get hurt or it might not necessarily fly away. So there is an element of trying to have some sort of... A, you know, realism, even if it's a fictional story, but it needs to make sense in maybe the, the physics, uh, notion of physics. So for the watermelon, Hello. Ooh. the water, I try, you, you can start with simple and go into more advanced, like kicking the watermelon or things like that and, and seeing where it takes Ooh. you to. Kick. Like look how many failures. I'm gonna try out a little boo. I'm gonna try out a little boo. So your biggest advantage should be just to try more and more because you'll both learn and you'll probably get to a more accurate result. And that's why I like Pika because they have the turbo and it works really, really fast. So I can quickly, more quickly understand if I'm going in the right path or not. So then I created that, I added it as well. You could see um, it's been stitched here. And then the Harry Potter. So not a lot of people notice, but the Harry Potter is actually a fine tuned version of myself as Harry Potter. Um, I added that as well. I prompted it and I was pretty happy with the result. It's one of these more recent ones. And you can even try probably like a bit of a <laughs> there are... fist bump. And, and you can yeah. even try probably like a bit of a... <sighs> Look, sometimes it doesn't even work. So that's why prompting is really important here. There's different ways. This, I think, even used the same prompt. But here Harry Potter was added and here he wasn't added. That's why you need to try multiple times the same and, and make sure that it's giving you or not giving you the result doesn't it's not a one kind of shot thing try probably like a bit of a fist bump. i'll actually and show i think the version that i wanted to go with initially like fist bump and you can even try i'm gonna try out a i'm gonna try out i'm gonna try out a probably 
and you can even and combine different and you can even try probably like a bit of a fist bump. Yeah, I actually wanted to go with this version first because it's a bit comic. Um, it's not what I intended to do, but just look how funny, how he reacts to the punch. And that's what you need to understand with Bika Editions and a lot of these uh, kind of more mm, reactionary AIs where it's not just looking at the prompt, but it's also looking at the initial content. Then there is a lot of level of you know playfulness and acting out, which is actually a huge opportunity for you to bring your unique self into it. Um, and that's why I also like Pika because I think this is going to be a bigger trend of this hybrid AI human uh, creativity and connection elements very and you could even try probably like a bit of a even try all right so that was basically a quick pika edition overview and you can main thing is that i like to say test 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 run it a few times or as many times as you can until you see that you're getting somewhere or further away from where you want to get kind of like a hot cold uh higher resolution images works better so if the image is grainy, then also your video is going to be grainy in it. So upscale. And again, that's why Ideogram is great. It allows you to easily upscale uh, any image. You just have upscale here. Uh, it does it fast. It does it really good quality. And then it'll ensure that the video that you have will also have matching quality. Um, third thing is lighting and scenery. Try to match it as much as possible. It seemed to me like it had an effect. Uh, and then prompting. Experiment with prompting. Try different things. Again, uh, you can have the same prompt. It'll return different results. But obviously, if you have different prompts, it will return different results as well. So there's lots more for you to go ahead and iterate and practice. So this is Pika. Um, it's definitely worth the investment, in my opinion. They have different plans, pro uh, and so forth, anywhere from 10 bucks to 20 30 40 And I think they even have higher. Um, but Pika is, is a company and product for you to watch for. So... Hope you enjoyed the demo. For sure, feel free to hit me up with any questions. Um, that's it.